Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're taking a look at this HP system for $700 and it has 5000 series in it. It has a brand new 5000 series Ryzen APU, which could be the savior for the GPU market right now. Well, kind of sorted, they're really hard to get, but we'll talk more about that after a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. Make sure you use code TV20 at checkout to get 20% off your purchase, and it's really easy to activate Windows. All you have to do is take that product key they send you, literally copy and paste it, click activate, and boom, you have Windows 10 Pro activated, ready to go. Link in the description down below will link you to Windows 10, use TV20, save some money, activate Windows. Don't let friends use unactivated Windows. It's not good. Don't let it happen. Goodbye. So we've done quite a few APU builds, especially with HP. We checked out their 2200G, 3200G, 3400G, and you name it, we've probably checked it out. This one here is a little bit of a game changer because this is the 5700G, which is an eight core, 16 threaded APU. And normally the most you could get was four core, eight threads with the 3400G, with not really many innovations coming out for really over a year. So this is interesting to see something with Vega 8 graphics, but eight cores and 16 threads. and. That really means upgrading in the future to a graphics card just as a no-brainer. And I was able to pick this thing up on eBay, actually. I couldn't get it directly from HP like we normally do because, well, they're flying off the shelves. But if you do want to pick them up in store, I know Office Depot and Staples are really good options. Nobody really goes there for them. So I'll try to leave links in the description down below. We have done videos at Office Depot and Staples before. You can get stuff if you get away from their salespeople. They've been kind of, they can be kind of crazy They'll when you're trying to you work around. out. You've got to buy the uh, antivirus, the printer, all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, let's just not waste any more time. Open this thing up and talk a little bit more about that 5700G. All right, gamers, let's open this thing up with our very tiny knife. So again, 5700G. Now, it is a new Ryzen CPU and it's based on the same architecture as the 5000 series, which is kind of good because for the most part, Ryzen APUs were always based on the previous generation. The 3200G was basically a 2000 series, but this is actually based on the same architecture as the new 5000 series Ryzen stuff, which is really powerful. So that's good news to see. Um, opening this thing up, it looks like we have the traditional HP like combo where we have a little keyboard and mouse which I'll go ahead and open up real quick. It's not gonna be anything special, but you know what? We'll show it off just in case. Look at that. There's the map. Uh, there's the keyboard. Mouse isn't in here. Mouse is probably somewhere else. So just basic uh, membrane keyboard that you can use if you don't want to pay for an extra one. Um, we also have. Uh, there it is. This is the mouse and the power uh, cable. Power cable. Um, we'll go ahead and open this up again. Traditional. I don't even want to spend too much time on it because it's all basic stuff. But what we have in here is the beautiful pavilion, which Jackson could like throw that box out of the way. There you go. Um, looks just like any other pavilion that HP has to offer. Very basic office looking PC, but that 5700G makes it well a pretty good option to potentially upgrade in the future with a graphics card. And uh, if the 5700G ever comes to the market for retail, makes for a good starter option. You don't get that beautiful acid green. Yeah, you don't get that acid green like you normally do. The acid green is mainly for their gaming lineup, but they do have this office lineup that well, looks pretty decent as well. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 7 sticker um, and it looks pretty good. As far as IO goes, we have, it looks like a bunch of USB ports. So we have one, two, three, four USB three ports. We have a uh, SD card reader. We have a USB type C and a uh, headphone. I'm assuming combo jack, because look at this little microphone right there and the power button, DVD reader if you actually need that. Um, on the back, we have two more USB 3s, which actually labeled this time. Sometimes there's only USB 2s on the back. Two USB 3s, uh, two USB 2s, uh, an Ethernet, HDMI, and VGA. Now, it looks like in terms of dual monitor support, you're kind of limited here, actually. You can only do HDMI and a VGA, which is really weird. Um, you're not only going to run multiple monitors on this, which in theory should be powerful enough to do because like 32G and stuff are perfectly capable for that. But um, I have to do some adapting here and there to make that work. But yeah, nothing too special regarding the actual look of this thing. I think we should just go ahead and open it up and see what it looks like inside when I get a screwdriver. All right, so the one thing that's gonna drive me crazy about this thing is the RAM configuration because, uh, I don't know if Jax can see it very well, we're only using one stick here. It is 16 gigs of RAM, but it is one stick. Really? For 16 gigs? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I get the money saving aspect of it, but 
Come on, guys. 16 gigs of RAM. You got to go two 8 gig sticks. Regardless of the uh, limitations for upgrades, it really makes things a lot better. There is only a 256 gig SSD in here, which is a little bit low for a PC nowadays, but you can always add a hard drive or a bigger SSD if you want to. It is an M.2 drive. I'm not totally sure if it's NVMe, but it is. Oh, it is NVMe. I see it right here. NVMe M.2 solid state drive. So it is NVMe. So you have those blazing fast speeds. And uh, yeah, it is a proprietary board for you at home who's going to be like, hey, can I case swap this thing? You're not going to be able to case swap it very well. The I IO, as you can see, here's the IO right here. It is on the motherboard. Like it's literally attached to the motherboard. So there's really not much you can do in terms of case swapping. And this power supply uses some proprietary connectors, like the 24 pins, only a four pin. Um, and then there's another four pin. So really can't do much with that. In terms of power supply, it looks like we're rocking a, ooh, that is low, low wattage. It I don't is, think it even comes with uh, PCIe cables. No, it is only 180 watts. So that is very low. So in all honesty, this thing is not really going to handle much of an upgrade, if I'm being perfectly honest here. It kind of is what it is. So that's kind of a bummer. But the, the main showcase in this video is because you can't get these 5700Gs off the shelf right now. AMD says you're going to be able to get them at some point, but right now that's not the case. So we just want to see how these things perform. Do they make sense? Should you get this and wait till graphics cards get better? Um, um, and it, would you really want to do that? And if you can pick one of those off the shelf and you can build your own PC, you should probably consider cooling that thing with a beautiful Arctic liquid cooler. Their liquid freezer 2, 240 mil liquid cooler comes with some RGB beautifulness because, you know, Arctic stuff's really powerful, but now it has RGB, so it's even better. So link down below. Thanks to them for getting a little ad spot right here for uh, using one of their coolers. So use it with your 5700G. But yeah, I think there's not a whole lot else to talk about as far as the internals of this system. I think we really just got to boot this thing up see how it performs and then kind of discuss why the 5700G exists and uh, why AMD should probably make it uh, available to the average consumer. All right, guys, now that we have this 5700G all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about a couple benchmarks real quick. Now, we decided to test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Call of Duty Cold War, Fortnite, and Apex Legends, mainly because, well, you're probably going to be playing esports titles on this kind of PC, and Cold War represents the higher end of the esports titles, Fortnite the lower end, and Apex Legends is kind of in the middle. If you guys have any suggestions for non-FPS games you'd like me to test, because after I released our recent benchmarking video, I realize we really only test first person shooters. Let me know down below. I'll be happy to add another game to the rotation. But first up with Cold War, we start to see the limitations of this APU and the fact that it still uses the older Vega 8 graphics. No matter how many more cores they add to the CPU, the Vega 8 graphics is not going to achieve over 30 to 40 FPS at 720p. It's just not going to happen. Cold War is not a very playable experience, and I wouldn't recommend you pick this thing up for a game like Cold War. There might have been some impact on the fact that it was using a single 16 gig stick, but in reality, when the GPU is pinged at over 100%, the bottleneck is on the GPU. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's running single channel memory. You might get a little bit of a performance boost by actually going with another stick, which we'll test later on in this benchmark run, but you're probably not going to see anything significant. So we decided not to retest Cold War with the uh, extra memory stick that we did with a game like Fortnite. Now, as we mentioned, Fortnite on performance mode at 1080p, we only averaged around 60 FPS with the single channel 16 gig stick. Now, we will be retesting this with another stick. We didn't have another 16 gig stick on hand, so we had to go ahead and rock, well, 24 gigs of memory by slapping another 8 gig DIMM, which works perfectly fine, but getting only 60 FPS is not great. These APUs can easily get over 100 plus FPS in pretty much any esports title like Fortnite, Rocket League, Rainbow Six Siege, Valorant, and games like that. Well, Rainbow Rainbow Six probably not nearly as much, but you get the point. Uh, these APUs are very capable, but at the end of the day, this APU is limited by the Vega 8 graphics. What makes these more appealing though, compared to something like a 3200G or 3400G, is the fact that the actual CPU is stronger. Therefore, you'll have a good placeholder option, but you can easily add a GPU to the system and the performance you get with that GPU upgrade later on would be far more significant compared to, let's say a 3200G or 3400G. Next up in Apex Legends on low settings, we had, well, a very horrible experience. It was the Vega graphics once again being pushed to the absolute limits, getting only 26 FPS average. I love that AMD released these, but I'm really, really excited again to see when they release some newer graphics on these APUs because they got the CPU part down perfectly. This is a great office PC. Uh, well, it's actually pretty overkill for an office PC. The fact they have eight cores and 16 threads, it would be great for like an entry level like video editing machine that has some built in graphics. 
So I can see this being good in like a graphic design studio or something like that. Those APUs would be pretty popular for that kind of workflow, but in reality, they're not that much better in games unless the game is very CPU dependent, which as you can see, when we added the extra memory into Fortnite, we got over 100 plus FPS. So those games that don't really rely heavily on the GPU, your esports titles, as I mentioned, should really benefit well just by running those Vega graphics because it is not nearly pushing the Vega graphics to 100% and is actually letting that CPU you do most of the work so as i mentioned again fortnite valorant uh rocket league that's another game i meant to say uh th all those games will run great on these apus and will work perfectly fine league of legends that's another good one so you would have no problems playing those games temporarily and then adding a gpu later when the market gets better and be able to play games like cold war apex legends uh, any of those higher end games shadow the tomb raider all those other games will work perfectly fine because you have a great cpu underneath the hood already so overall i'm pretty happy with the performance of this APU. Is it groundbreaking? No, because the graphics do let it down, but the fact that you have a good basis to get up and running and gaming right now and upgrade a GPU later makes it a really compelling option, especially if you're considering a high-end build already in the future, but just can't put the money up right now because of the current GPU market. So if you guys are interested in picking this thing up, link in the description down below. Really happy with how the 5700G performs. Not super happy with how this PC is configured because of the low wattage power supply. It's not super upgradable but we really bought the system as just a way to get the 5700g so uh, if you can pick one of those things up when they actually come to the market because at the time of recording this video they are going to be coming to the market in august so that's really awesome to hear um yeah purchase them do it right now link down below we'll see you guys in the next one let's bring jackson back in here wrap this video up real quick all right guys so in our conclusion we basically decided that this pc as a whole is not the greatest bang for buck mainly because that power supply is really holding you back if you wanted to throw in any type of graphics card that requires uh, pcie power we really don't recommend it because this processor alone is probably using 65 to 95 watts already and adding a graphics card that uses more than just the 75 watt rail is probably going to max this thing out the main reason i got this was because well we want to make a video on the 5700g as soon as possible and that in if that thing is readily available on the retail market for you to do your own PC build, then yeah, at whatever price point it releases that, I think it's gonna be a pretty good option. It's not much better in terms of like playing AAA titles like Cold War or even like Apex Legends, it's more GPU dependent, it's not great, but when you're playing games like Fortnite, Valorant, CSGO, Rocket League, any of those esports titles that are very CPU dependent, you do get a performance uplift over older Ryzen. So I look forward to seeing how AMD will take these CPUs into the future and get some better graphics on board because because the CPU part, they got down perfect. So if you guys wanna buy this PC, we'll have links in the description down below. We'll also try to link some other ones that have similar APUs in them that are 5000 series. And also we are checking out some other HP products really soon that also have some 5000 series graphics in it. So we're gonna see what they're actually like with the graphics card. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toastybrands. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. And also, if you guys didn't know, we also have a PC selling business called PCBros.Tech, where this PC will likely be sold already. Yeah, you might not be able to buy it, but once again, go to PCBros.Tech at the end of these videos. We might have a video that's not even out on the channel yet, a PC that we already did a video on, and you can buy it. Yeah, do that. Buy it right now. Good deals. Bye. Deals. Deals. Deals.